Hello, this is Jim Muncy with Project Tech. This presentation will show you how to create a more complex project plan using the work order parent child functionality as well as routes and nested job plans. There are multiple ways to do things in Maximo, but this example will show you the general methodology to create a project. In this scenario, we will create a project for the Q4 plan outage. We will begin this by taking a quick look at some job plans I made up for this presentation. Click on Go To and Planning and Job Plans. I made up a basic job plan here for this project. I just call it Project Planning. It's very basic. It's, I made it active. I've got six steps to these. Now, each step is very basic. I got HVAC, shipping, instrumentation, subsystem inspections, and a couple more. These really refer to plant departments that will be affected during the next uh, project or outage. And for each one of these, I have a nested job plan. Now, we'll take a look at a nested job plan next. The nested job plan is just simply any job plan could be a nested job plan. And this one's very basic. It says HVAC outage work. I only have one task for it. It says HVAC work. So these two types of job plans, the project plan and these nested job plans, will have a big impact on my overall project. Now, to take a look at another functionality, we'll click on Go To, Planning, and slide over to Routes. Routes are a very simple application is a list of different assets or locations, and you can even associate either the same job plan to each one or different job plans. Now, what I've done here is I've listed 17 different assets, and for each asset, I gave it its own individual job plan. They're all different. And you have options in Maximo 7 where you can either have the route create child work orders, or it can be just a work order task. To begin our project planning, go to and work order tracking. And I will start out by creating a new work order. Project planning, we'll call this outage Q4. Give it a higher level location. We'll put the site level on here. This is a Needham site. And we're going to go give it a work type. We'll select the work type of capital project. Now we're going to add a job plan to this. My job plan is going to be my overall project plan. It just says project planning outage Q4. We made it a uh, capital project. We added a job plan to it. And we, we gave it a target start and finish dates. Now, let's see what that job plan did to this work order. We'll click on the Plans tab. Now, what the job plan did, because we had those nested job plans within our project job plan, is it created a child work order for every one of those tasks we had on our project planning job plan. We created basically six child work orders. So each child work order has listed this overall project plan work order as its parent. So now we have a parent and we have a hierarchy, basically, a parent, and we have six different child work orders. Each department manager would take their own child work order and then plan out their own project based on the work they have to do for that specific outage. One new feature in Maximo is the communications feature. This allows you to send an email notification directly out of Maximo. You can use this to notify your department heads. Click on Select Action, and now it says Create and slide across to create communication. Just like any other email, you would enter the email address, a subject, and a message, and you can use this to alert all of your department heads about the work orders they need to be planning out for the outage. Done. Now all my department heads are notified that they now have a work order to plan out. And we can actually take a look at that on my log tab, on the communications log sub tab. And there I have a record of that email I just sent out. I can open it up, and this is a permanent record in Maximo. This is very similar to your sent box. Now let's go back to my plans tab, and I'm gonna change hats now. I'm gonna become the HVAC supervisor and plan out my HVAC work. So I'm gonna click on my arrow to the right of my child record here, and I can hyperlink to that specific work order. We'll go to it. And now I'm at that work order 1370. And you can see from the work order that my child work order is for HVAC, and it's attached to my parent work order 1369, the overall uh, project plan. So I'm going to click on the Plans tab, and we'll plan this work order out as well. And the way we'll do this, we're going to create child work orders for every one of the work, work order that needs to be done during this outage. We'll make a child work order out of it and attach it to my HVAC department head work order. There are multiple ways to do this. We'll show you a couple of ways here. I'm going to click on Select Assets. I can filter my list here and say, show me all everything with HVAC in description. And there's two items that have HVAC in them. I can select both these. I just created two more work orders that are child work orders on my overall HVAC department work order. Now I can do more than that too. I can also 
select existing work orders. You may have work orders out there that are in a backlog waiting to be done. I can assign them to this outage and get them all done at the same time. So I'm going to click on the button that says select work orders. And we'll go in the description and type in HVAC. There are multiple ways to, to narrow the list down. I'll check the ones I want. And what this does, it associates those existing work orders to this parent work order. And now I have my parent work order 1370, which is a child of my overall project plan. And I have all the individual work orders already set up for it. I'm going to go through my work orders. Each of these child work orders should be planned out as well. This one's already planned out. It's already got a, uh, a job plan on it. I'll go to my next one. That one's planned out as well. These are the two existing work orders I, I brought into it. Now, the two I just created, the new ones, these have no job plan on them. So what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to add, add a job plan to it. As the HVAC department head, I've taken some existing work order orders already in system and my backlog, added them to my HVAC department work order. I created a couple of new ones just for the outage. And now I have a four work orders that HVAC department will be doing during this outage. Now I'm going to return to back to my project again. Hit the return button on the upper right. And we'll keep on going. Now we'll change hats and be the shipping department. I'll click my arrow again next to my work order 1371. Go to work order tracking. And we'll do the same thing here. Go to my plans tab. We'll click the select assets. We'll filter for my shipping department assets that need work done during the outage. And I just have two forklifts that need work to be done to them. I'll select them. And this automatically creates two additional child work orders attached to my shipping department work order. And we'll plan these out. Open the detail up. We'll add a job plan to this. And go to my next one. Give it a job plan as well. And save the record. Now I'm going to keep this simple. We're not going to put a whole lot of work orders on this. Uh, but you get the idea. And I'm going to go back to my original project plan. And my next department is instrumentation. I'll be the instrumentation department head now. Click my arrow. Go to work order tracking. And same thing, go to my plans tab. And we'll select assets. We'll filter for them. And there's all my standards. They all need to be recertified. Click OK. And I just created six work orders from instrumentation group. I'll hit the save button. And they all need a job plan. So we'll click on the detail arrow and give them all a job plan. And we'll do them all the same way. And I'm going to stop there. Uh, I know I have six work orders up here. But I don't have to keep them all if I don't want to. I, I may decide that I don't want these last two. And I can just click the trash can. And it draws a line through them. And I'm going to hit the save button to make those two go away. Okay, those won't be done. And I have one more to do down below here. And we'll save the record. Now my instrumentation department is ready to go. Hit the return button on the upper right. Back to my project. Now I can keep on going and do all, all of these the same way. Now I'm going to do one more thing here. I want to jump down to hierarchy. Take a look at something. We're pretty much done with our project plan here. I've added several departments here. Each department got their work order. They planned their work out. They put their own child work orders on, onto their department work order. They put a job plan each one of those. So I can always hyperlink down to hierarchy and go to my lower level work order. And I'll click on the plans tab. And this is just one of the work orders for the pump service. On the plans tab, it has no child. It has a parent but no child. This is at the lowest level. And that my job plan I put on here has a complete list of all the tasks to be done. The craft is there. I probably have materials and tools as well. Now let's take a look at some select action options. At this lowest level, I can click on View and click on the entire plan. This tells me at a glance all the labor I need for this one job plan. I can click on the Materials tab. It'll tell me all the material I need and even what steps it goes to. Services, if I have any standard services, and what tools I might need. In this case, I need a torque wrench. All this is available for this one work order. We'll go check another option here. We'll go back to Select Actions. Go down to View and View Cost. Here we can see all the costs for this work order. This is at the bottom level, so I'm looking at all my estimates for, for the work order I'm looking at, and this also adds up the grand total. If this work order had a child to it, all the costs would roll up to, to the hierarchy. This shows all the costs of my work order for labor, labor hours, material cost, everything. Now we're going to march up the hierarchy. We'll go back up to apartment work order for my pumps. And here I can do the same thing. Click on Select Actions and View and see the entire plan. Now this shows me all the work orders that make up my project, all the labor required, and I can see my materials. This is for my entire uh, pump department here. All the materials required. We'll take a look at the tools now. There's all the tools I need. I need three torque wrenches. So you see how this all adds up and, and moves up the hierarchy. Now we'll take a look at the costs. Select Actions, View, Costs. This totals all the work orders in my entire department for the outage and shows me the total cost of all the work being done. 
This can be downloaded to a spreadsheet to make a nice report. Now we're going to go up to Hierarchy one more time and we'll bounce up to the project plan. This is my overall top of the site plan. And each one of my departments is listed here. And I'm going to check the same thing. Click on Select Actions and we'll go View and Entire Plan. This shows me at a glance all the labor I, re I need for, the, for my entire outage. I can go to my Materials tab here and see all the materials I require for this outage and all the how many of each one, the total cost, line cost. I could download this table to a spreadsheet and get a complete listing of all my labor and materials along with the total cost for the project. So everything marches up the hierarchy this way. And one more thing, we'll check the cost. View, cost. And because this is the top of the hierarchy work order, I'll see the entire cost for everything. So my entire outage here is going to cost me $1,503 right now. Okay, and it adds up all my labor hours, labor cost, material, and all that little table there is downloadable. This is how a project plan works in Maximo. Now I want to show you one other functionality here. Let's say I'm still planning this out. So I'm going to go back to my plans tab. I'm going to go to one more department hit here. And I got one guy in charge of miscellaneous outage work. So I'm going to go to that work order and show you another way of planning this out. This is my miscellaneous outage work. Now we've seen before I could go to plans tab and select and create work orders that way if I wanted to. There's another way you can also do this. I'm going to click on select actions and I'm going to go to where it says apply route. And we're going to select our route here. I got one made up for my outage, fall outage work package. Now this sometimes takes a few minutes depending on how big your route is. And you can see what's happened here is by applying that route, that route has 17 assets listed on it. The route automatically creates all of these work orders as child work orders. And you can see them all listed there. They've all been created as a child work order. So the route created all 17 child work orders. These are all the child work orders right now. So not only have they been created, but they've all been given a job plan as well because the job plan was listed on the route. This is very handy. If I was a department head, I would have a route made up for every asset that required maintenance or service during the, any outage and have it ready to go. All you do then is apply your route to your department head's work order. It creates all of my child work orders automatically. And if I want to take a look at all my uh, costs again, click on Select Actions, View Costs. And once again, you can see all the labor, materials, services, and tools for your entire project and all the child work orders. This concludes this presentation on project planning using Maximus Parent-Child Work Order Relationship. Thank you. Please visit our website at www.projecttech.com to see our other training demos. If you have any questions, please contact us. Thank you.